to welcome everyone to today's year from Rav Yaakov Zev's Mishlita on the topic of priorities in Torah and Mitzvahs. Whoever would like to have the great school to sponsor this year, call Irgen Shir Torah, 718-851-8651. Today, Baruch Hashem, we see a lot of learning going on before davening, after davening, <coughs> during davening. <coughs> and of course, the question that comes up is, there's a group or even a yachid that's learning in the back, or behind the mechitz, or upstairs, or downstairs, and they hear Dvarim Shebekedusha, they hear Kaddish, they hear Kedusha being said, do you have to interrupt the learning to answer Dvarim Shebekedusha? What's probably a more challenging question, we see today, there are shiurim that are being given, and collectors come to raise money. Someone to gives a share, he told me, he doesn't know why all the collectors come during learning, not during davening. So I told him, I know the, the answer is simple. If you notice during davening, when collectors come, people start getting very involved in their davening as if they're Milosh Meinesra. You know, I always say it's a school for a better davening, have collectors come to shul. Everybody's so involved, so they don't see the collectors during, during davening. But during learning, you know, you're sitting there. But anyhow, this is a question that a Magad Sheer wanted to know if he could make a takana, no collecting during the Sheer. He finds it very distracting. But then again, the mitzvah tzedakah is the mitzvah tzedakah. This past summer, I don't know if you, you might remember it, if you were in the mountains, we had, um, after Tisha B'av, it was raining almost every night. It was supposed to rain the entire week. And there was no Kiddush Levana. It was Wednesday night, and I think the last night was Thursday, but Wednesday night it was, uh, I was in a besmedge with a few hundred B'nai Torah learning. And around 9.20, like around 10 minutes before night, the end of night, say there, someone came in and clapped Kiddush Levana. First, it seemed like for a minute or two, the Levana appeared. And the Besmedjish emptied out. And 400 B'nai Torah were learning one minute. The next minute, they're making Kiddush Levana. And someone was Ma'ira. That's you know, a bit of Torah of Rabbim. Ay, Kiddush Levana. So have and You could do it today, tomorrow. So that started me thinking that we have to go through this sugya. The, the concept of Talmud Torah, Keneged Kula, Mitzar Echod. But then again, there are mitzvahs that we have to do. And there, are there any priorities? You know, I always say this, when you're young, the nesoy in life is, will you do the right thing? Will you daven? Will you learn? When you get older, the nesoy is, what's the right thing? You know, do you go to a chasana? Do you miss yeshir? Do you continue learning? Ignore the davash of kedusha. And this is one sugya that you see b'chush, this challenge. What's the right thing? You want to do the right thing. You're looking for the MS. What's the right thing? Juggling Torah and other mitzvahs. So Pashtis, this should be a Beferish Mishnah that we can't forget because we say it every morning. The Mishnah in the beginning of Peya enumerates different mitzvahs and the Mishnah, the Mishnah concludes this Salm Torah Keneged Kula. In other words... <clears throat> Talmud Torah is more chashev. Talmud Torah outweighs all mitzvahs. If you have any doubts about how far that goes, you look in the Rishalmi in the beginning of Peyah. It's the Avgimel Amad Beis and the Standard Prince. I feel the kol mitzvah iseh shel Torah. If you put all the mitzvahs, all Taryab, 612 mitzvahs on one side, enam shava ledava echad min ha One word of Torah outweighs all other mitzvahs. That's what it means, Talmud Torah Keneged Kula. And that's why you look in the Goyim, in his Pirish, on that Mishnah, in Shana Yisrael Yo, he says, why did the, the Tana have to tell us Talmud Torah Keneged Kula? Lachar, that's a question of Schar. That's the Bani Shlom's business. It's not Negea for us. Zok the Goyim, V'zeh L'shayin Kotshay. V'noket HaTana, Hodein Talmud Torah, this concept, the guy never repeated words, but here he repeated it. Ma'oid, ma'oid. A person has to have an excessive love for Torah. Why push it? Because you take all the mitzvahs on one side, and one var Torah outweighs. 
And therefore, when a person is, challenge, is faced with a challenge, what to do, Torah or mitzvahs, Avadi, he should learn Torah first. Because even one word, Torah, is Kenege Kulam, certainly, a person learns for an hour. Don't forget the Chavetz Chaim, in the Sefer Chavetz Chaim, makes a cheshben that the average person could, could say 200 words in a minute. So 200 words of Talmud Torah, Kenege Kulam in a minute. And what's an hour, and what's two hours, and three hours? But the point is, Talmud Torah, Kenege Kulam, is a very real currency by Boreal. And then you could understand the Gemara in Megillah, the Aftazayin, where the Gemara says, Godel Talmud Torah, Yoisam Yatzalas Nefashes. We learned it out from Mordechai, as we, as we recall. Talmud Torah is bigger than Hatzalah. Now, even though, Kolamatzal Nefashachas Mi Yisrael, Kilukayim Oilam Mole, and of course, a person that is able to save a life has to run and stop learning to save a life. But, as the Taz in the end of Reish and Aleph explains, Avadi, you have to stop learning for Atzalus Nefashis. But when a person doesn't have to go on Atzala, he has to realize what Torah is. And if, he, and if someone else could go on Atzala and he could stay learning, God will tell him the Torah, Yaisim Yatzalus Nefashis. Rabbaran used to say, maybe I guess that adds to it, he says a person that learns Torah is the biggest Atzalus Nefashis. He's, he's the national security of Klal Yisrael. And this explains the next Gemara. In Megillah of Tezayin, God will tell the Torah, "Yaisa mi kibud avayim." Mar learns from Yaakov Avinu that as great as kibud av is, in fact, the same Yishalmi says kibud av is chamura sheba chamurais, but tell the Torah is still greater. And then you could understand why Chazal were very focused on what's called bittul Torah. The Rama and Reish Memvav Siv Chafei quotes a Gemara, Sanhedrin. If someone is able to learn, he doesn't learn. That's Kidvar Hashem Baza. It's not just Bittal Torah, it's a Bazayan. You could gather these gems, these diamonds. You could gather a Var Torah that's Kedega Kulam and you don't. So that's the biggest Bazayan if you don't learn when you're able to learn. But in a Gale in Yonenu, we see a different form of quote Bittal Torah. Imagine the following Shaila. There's an Olam learning, a yeshiva learning. It's Moitzai Shabbos. They heard Avdallah, but they didn't yet make the bracha of Ner. They didn't have a fire, so they didn't make the bracha of Ner. In the middle of Seder, someone comes and brings a Ner, and now you have to make the bracha of Bayre Meire Eish. So the Gemara in Brachis Nun Gimel has a Shaila how to do it. Zok Beis Hillel, let one person make the bracha of Meire Eish, and I'll be Moitzi the entire Tzib, I'll try Vam Hadras Melech. No, fair enough, makes sense. Beis Shammai says, no, each one makes their own bracha. Not Rav Am. Ah, what's wrong with Rav Am? Zog to Gemar, b'pnei bitl beis hamedrash. Like it sounds like bitl tire. Where's the bitl tire? We're listening to the bracha of Ner, we're saying Amen, and back to the Gemar. So you look in your bain of on that Gemar, he says, the davaniflamoid, the cheshman is pashat. If I make the bracha of Bayer Mary Eish, it's nine words. So I finish the nine words, I'm back in the Gemara. But if someone, the Gabi makes the bracha, I have to listen to all nine words and also say Amen. The word Amen, I'm not going to say Bittel Tayr Chasom, it's a mitzvah. But that could be avoided. That's the Bittel Base Medrash. One word, a word that's a Chiyah. But if you could avoid it, that's Bittel Base Medrash. But the truth is, it's not such a chiddush. Because that word of Torah that you could learn instead of Amen is connected all mitzvahs. That is connected tar yab mitzvahs. You know, in Torah, there's no such thing as just one word. One word is a hoin rab, is an estimable value. But we see a different halacha about the extent of, of this bitl Torah. You know, there's a minig Yisrael today, and it's interesting, even the Goyim Lahav will have this minig, that when someone sneezes, we say, Gesundheit, uh, Asus, uh, bless you in English, La uh, Briyut, I think, in Eretz Yisrael. This is a Yiddish minig, this is a Chazal. In Pirkei Debeliez, the Perik Nun Beis, it's recorded that in, in the way it always was, that a person lived his years, and they lived a long time in the olden days, and he sneezed and he died. He was never sick. Yaakov asked from Bayri Yoylam that a person should have time to prepare. He should leave at Savah, prepare for, for that big awesome day. 
So the Baruch Shalom gave him the concept of a sickness, chayli. And after Yaakov's bakasha was fulfilled, something new happened. A person sneezed and he survived. Usually in the olden days he sneezed and he died. That was Misa, sneeze. But after Yaakov asked for chayli, a person sneezed and didn't die. That was the minig, and that is the minig of saying Gesundheit, Asusa. Zok the Gemara in Brachis Nun Gimel. A person should not say Asusa during learning. Now, even though it's an Indian, it's brought in Gemara, but that's considered bittel tire. You're learning. You're doing something more important. And the Ramah in Reish Memvav Yud Zayin makes a point of quoting this. The point is that Asus is important and Amen is important, but if it can be avoided, the most important word is the Vartaira. And now you can understand a little more the Mishnah Abayz Perigimel Mishnah Zayin. Hamalech Baderach Veshayna. He's learning. He's going on the road. He's traveling, but he's learning. Now the Yama says he's not battling. He's praising Kaddish Baruch Hu. But he could do more for his time. He could continue learning. Now of course we should not get nervous from this or scared or frightening or overwhelmed. Or, what, what, what's going to be? Get excited and anxious. We have an opportunity to learn a Torah that's Kineget Kula. Now, it reminds me of the Shach in the beginning of Reish Mem Vav. The Gemara says that really Talmud Torah, you can be Yaitzu with Krishna of Shachas and Arvis, but don't tell an Amar it's this. Because then he'll just say Krishma, Shachas and Arvis, and that's it. Yet you look in the Ramah, the Ramah brings the Alacha that you Yaitzu Talmud Torah with Krishna, Shachas and Arvis. Freg the Shach. Why did Ramah bring it if the Gemara says not to, to, to publicize it? Zok Shach, because there's another sheet in the Gemara, Rabbi says, Adar go out and be mefarsim that you yoyt a Talmud even with Krishma. Because then the Amarits will say, what? Even Krishma is Kenega Kulam? Even, a, even something as, as, as little as Krishma is Kenega Kulam? Look what Torah is. He'll be so inspired to the greatness of Torah, he'll learn more and more and more and more. So when we hear all about Talmud Torah, it should excite us. That's what Torah is. I'm going to do it more and more. Oy bazoy l'chayra. All of our shaylas should be very easy to decide. Kiddush Levana versus Talmud Torah. Talmud Torah can kulam. Answering Davish Vigdusha. What's the shayla? Talmud Torah can kulam. Giving tzedakah during learning. Talmud Torah can kulam. But this is absolutely not true. Because there's, a, there's something that's as important, if not more important than learning, and that's called living Torah. That's called halacha l'maysa, living Torah. What does that mean? Like the Mishnah says in Abbas, Perik Aleph, Mishnah Yudzayin, Loi ha-medjush hua eka, ela ha-maysa. Torah, besides being an ends for itself, every word Torah is the ultimate mitzvah of all mitzvahs, but Torah is almanas l'asayis. Torah makes us better people. You know, the Yishalmi says in Brachis, Perik Aleph, Mishnah Beis, Haloyim et Shalei Lassais, Noyach loy ili nefcha shul yasi al pana vla yotza la avir ha'oilam. If someone learns Torah day and night, he's kulay cool Torah, literally, but doesn't do any mitzvahs, it's better he shouldn't have been born. Why? Because not only he's not learning properly, he's not living properly. That's not Ratzon Hashem. Gemara says in Kedushin, Daf Memo Medbeis, Talmud Godel, Shemevi Lede Maisa. You learn a lot, and you do a lot of mitzvahs. There's an unbelievable shtikel in Stiple, in Kilis Yaakov, Brachis Tezvav, it, 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 you'll, if you want to have an Oynik Shabbos on Sunday, take it out and learn it today, if you have a chance. The Stiple has a, a, a better understanding of the mitzvah of Talmud Torah, but one of the gems that he says, I'll, I'll share with you, the question the Shalmi asks is, why don't we say when someone's learning, he's part of a mitzvah, because Isaac B'tayra, Isaac B'mitzvah is part of a mitzvah. 
Says the Yishalmi, says, says the disciple, the Ikah Chavivas Talmud Torah, because Talmud Mevil De Maisa. And therefore, Haloyim et Shloyam and Aslasa is Havigiroyim Beguf Mitzvah Talmud Torah. It's a chasaran in the Chefts of Torah if someone learns and doesn't do mitzvahs. A chasaran in the Kiyama Mitzvah is a chasaran in the Guf of Mitzvah Talmud Torah. Says the disciple, Oy Bazoy, if someone's learning is not doing mitzvahs, he's not learning. You can't say Isaac the mitzvah put them in a mitzvah because it's not a mitzvah. You know, if I would say that, you would think, well, what am I crazy? How could I say I'm learning the Yom Valayla and it's not a mitzvah? Isn't, isn't that a bazillion of Torah to say that? But the stipler, good fashtan. The biggest bazillion of Torah is when someone doesn't have time for mitzvahs, doesn't have time for someone else, doesn't have time for a chesed. The biggest chasarin in Torah is when someone doesn't have time for a mitzvah. And the stipler was able to say that learning Shalayam and Aslasais is a chasarin in Limit Torah. It's not Isaac the mitzvah. The biggest covet of Torah is when we understand that Torah makes us better people. And it's not a chas a subject, it's not a chachmah, it's the, the Torah selikim that makes us better people. So we have to learn Yom and Belayla, but have to have time for, Torah, for mitzvahs and for chesed and everything else. And then you can understand other Gemaras. Gemara says in Ksubis Yudzayin, Mevatlan Talmud Torah, Laitzah Sames, Ulach Nosas Kala. You have to go to Chassid, you have to go to Levi, we shouldn't have to go, but you have to go to Levi. You understand the Gemara says in Shabbos that you had Rav Asur of Hamnuna that was, that, that was being Meirich in Tefillah. So he asked him, Manichin Chayi Oilam V'oiskim B'chayi Yisho? Torah is, is Nitzchiyas. So you're stopping to learn for davening? V'hu Sava, Zaman Tefillah Lechud, Zaman Torah Lechud. There has to be a time and place for everything. Or consider this Gemara in Kedushin, the Mar has a list of probably a dozen Amaroyim that were busy with preparing for Shabbos. Rav Safra, Machrech Reisha, Rav Amalach Shibuta, Rav Papa made the wicks. Everybody was busy with preparing for Shabbos. Aye, these Amaroyim certainly were kool Torah. Why they stop learning to, to burn off the hair from the animal? <laughs> Isn't Tamar Torah Kanega Kula? The answer is, but now there's a mitzvah of Achana for Shabbos. And indeed, the Mechaba and Reish Nun, Sif Aleph, quotes his La'alacha. The point is, learning is of utmost importance, but there's also a part two, or maybe that's part of Limer HaTorah, Almanas Lasseis. You know, our Tachlis HaChayim is Adam La'amal Yulad, no doubt about it. But La'amal is also the Rosh Tevis. Lilmaid Alman Aslasis. There has to be a time for mitzvahs. You know, someone says, uh, listen, but I'm different. I'm kool a I have no time for all these things. I'm learning, you know, Yom of Alayla. So I told this person, a Gemara, the Mara says, Yavamas daf kuftes, kala oime ain't lay ala taira. I'm kool a taira. I feel a taira ain't lay. Why? Because the Pasuk is limaritem vasisam. If you don't, if you learn, it has to be vasisam. And Rashi says a very sharp lashon. I feel a Torah ain't like this. Cool a Torah ain't. I feel Torah ain't like ain't a big mekabel schar limud. You know what the stipler says is really a gemara. That's not to learn. The chida in Birkei Yosef Simon Lamed Ches Kamat says like the stipler. He asks a question. Why don't we see Isaac a mitzvah? Put them in a mitzvah regarding someone who's learning, because the Ika Torah is. And therefore, you can't say, Oh, it's a part of a mitzvah if that's not what Torah is all about. So I hope it's very clear that there's a mitzvah of Talmud Torah, but there has to be time for mitzvahs. The question, of course, that we have a lot of explaining to do is how do we understand this? A person's a businessman. I know Tam Torah Kinekum, that's the biggest char. Why should, how could I break for mitzvahs? How could I stop learning for mitzvahs if, if, if Torah is a bigger mitzvah? And if you're going to say, well, now that you have to do chesed, it's doich alimera Torah. That's wrong. That's a Torah with our Mishnah. The Mishnah says Tam Torah Kinekakula. So I'm going to tell you, you say that the stipler in that shtickle says, but you want to see the, the 
Bekitzen or Semeach and Talmatara Aleph Beis, the Berke Shmuel, Kedushin Chavzai, and the Kaivit Shurim, Chalik Beis, Yotes Beis, and the Bers Moshe, Kedushin, Mem Gimel Gimel. All say the Yisoy, Bekitzen, but the stifler brings it out, I think, most clear. And if I'm allowed to add a little mu- of a muscle, I think that could illustrate the point even better. Imagine you're sitting by a yeshiva dinner, and someone, a big Nadvin, just gave $10 million, and he's building a building single-handedly. He's building the whole entire yeshiva. And people are tell, speaking about his greatness, one speak after the other. He has a schos of uh, eternity, and he's, he does. And you're an elicha person, you're sitting there, and you're mamish, envious of him. He built a whole yeshiva, he has a schus for Nitzchi, he has hundreds of Eden learning every day, he's on Bachem learning, Kail. and he thinks of, you know, why didn't I give $10 million? It's such a big schus, and it bothers you. I could have had that schus. Now, why didn't you give $10 million? I think most people could answer it very simply. I don't have, right? And as I'm an Ainus. Really? That's, that's the extent? You know, if someone's sick in the hospital and he doesn't have a mincha but he's an Ainus. If I don't give $10 million, I'm an oinus? But he did it? No, it doesn't make sense. Terrence is very posh. There's no mitzvah to give $10 million. A person has to give maisa, a tenth or a twentieth is even better. If, if this person that's sitting there envious makes $100 a week and he gives $25 for tzedakah a week, he's a tzaddik tamim. And if this nadvin that gave $10 million is worth $200 million, so he's going to head to some place other than Gan Eden because he didn't give his maisa. He only gave 5%. <clears throat> so what's the pshat? There's no mitzvah to give $10 million. The mitzvah is to give as much as you can, 10 or 20%. That is exactly the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. The Rebbe Shalom gave us the mitzvah Talmud Torah, Kinegakula. but the Rebbe Shalom gave us Tariyag mitzvahs. The Baruch Hashem gave us family and spouse and parents. And the Baruch Hashem said, there's a mitzvah of Talmud Torah every moment that you're not busy with any other rots in Hashem. Zok the stipler, when someone has a mitzvah of chesed, there's no mitzvah of Talmud Torah. So when someone's home washing dishes and is thinking, is this brittle little Torah? I could be learning. The answer is no. Because right now you have to do chesed at home. Charity begins at home, like the Rambam says. And right now, that's the mitzvah the Baruch Hashem wants from you. So it's not the pshat that washing dis- dishes or chesed is doicha Talmud Torah. But rather, when you're doing a mitzvah, there's no mitzvah of Talmud Torah. That's why it's pashit, there's no p'tur of oisik and mitzvah, patan mitzvah by Talmud Torah. Because right now, when you have a chi of mitzvah, this is what you have to do. Now, this is, I think, an extremely important and helpful attitude. You know, Baruch Hashem... I'm in yeshiva, we have bochem, masmidim, don't waste a moment. I'm so yachid to be with balabatim like you, don't, don't, that, that appreciate every moment of Torah. And very often a masmid finds sometimes life to be very challenging. He loves learning, he learns every moment, and then he has to stop to help someone. And he finds it very stressful. He finds it an ordeal. I, 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 I like to go back to learn, well, you know... And that's not the Ratzin Hashem. A mitzvah should not be an ordeal, a mitzvah should be a pleasure. But how do you juggle? You know, Tom Batari can egg a cool and here I am, I'm, I'm fixing someone's flat. Okay, he needs help, but you know, should I be doing better? The answer is right now, your only mitzvah is chesed. I always tell the Bachim this. What's the most important thing in life? Now that's a very hard question to answer because you'll find this chazal and that chazal, you know, mitzvah you know, you know, chatami, you know, what's the most important, the biggest thing? I tell him the answer is very simple. The most important thing in life is what the Baruch Hashem wants from you right now. And that's the neshama of, Tam, of the mitzvah of Talmud Torah. Avada Talmud Torah kinege kulam. But right now the Baruch Hashem wants you to do this mitzvah. That, that's, that's, the, that's the most important thing. I'll put that very much to the Imagine a bacha, a masmid, who's taka, not looking for you. He's a real masmid. He's had Erev Yom Kippur, he has an hour or two before, in the afternoon, he wants to prepare for him. Kip, he's out, he wants to go learn. And his mother calls out, uh, Yassi, I, I need, I need uh, colored sprinkles for, for the, I give Ervim Kip a cake. She goes, but there's sprinkles there. Yeah, yeah, but I'll cover him Kip, I want to have colored sprinkles, not regular sprinkles. And he's in a turmoil. Talmud Torah is doicha kolatar, all mitzvahs. It's zicha doicha colored sprinkles. 
Yeah, but the average he yites with regular sprinkles. But he, if he has a Torah attitude, right now the most important thing in his life is the mitzvah of kibur aim to buy colored sprinkles. Now it's not the shot colored sprinkles is doicha talmud Torah. But right now in his oilam of avoidus Hashem, this is the only thing that exists. When he finishes buying his colored sprinkles, gay langas and day. But if it's kibur aim, which is a mitzvah, this is the most important thing in his world. So then you're not torn, you're not stressed, you do everything b'simcha. Before you apply this a little more lemaisa, there's one more cloud we have to clarify. So now that we know tamatari kinegat kulam, but the amanas lasleis is very, very important. So how do I approach that? Should I walk in the street looking for chesed? Because once I have chesed, then it's the most important thing. So this is the Gemara in Ma'it Kat and Davtes. The basic klal is a mitzvah she'ef shel asoyz yadei achirim. If someone else could help this fellow with his flat, let the other person do it, and you stay in learning. If someone else could do the chesed, you stay in learning. Why? It's very posh. Because there has to be chesed, this person needs chesed, but your learning is more important. Narvas, if no one else could do it, this is what the Rebbe wants. But if there's someone else that's not learning anyhow, let the other person help and do chesed, and you stay in learning. In other words, when it's EF Shadei Achayrim, it's your responsibility. Now, there's only chesed. But if someone else could do it, you'd be a better investor. You'd be a wise investor. And it's true, it's Emma's, that this Yisoyed is also a Yishalmi, a, a remarkable Yishalmi in Psachim, Gimel Zayin. Bavo sent his son, Rabbi Hanina, to learn Torah in Tveria. And he got a report. They came and told him, your son is being Isaac and Chesed. In other words, they snitched on his son. He became an Askin. So he sent him, Hamibli ein kvarim bekistrin shalach tichel Tveria. Playing, play on words in the Pasuk. There are not enough chesed in Kisran. Why did I send you to Tveria? Not to become an Askin. I wanted you to learn. And there, the Yishalmi explains, because there were other Askanim in Tveria that could do those mitzvahs. I sent you to learn. Now is your time to learn. You're a Bacha learn. That's the cloud. Chesed is gewaldig. Mitzvahs are gewaldig. If it's Efshad, the Acherim, top priority, the Talmud Torah, Kinega of course, is the deciding factor. And you'll look in Shulchan Aruch, Reish Mem Vav Yud Ches, you'll see the entire Shmuz in Mamash 1C. The Mechaba begins, Talmud Torah, Shakal Kenege Kola Mitzvahs. Which is unusual, because Pasha, that's Negea Feschar. But the Mechaba brought it to remind us that that's first. The first Klal is Talmud Torah, Kenege Kulam. And every day we say it in Davening to remind ourselves. But, Zok the Mechaba, if you have a Mitzvah, that's the Efshad Yacherim. Then you stop learning. You pause from your learning to go and do the mitzvah. Now, very often a person is approached. He's in the middle of learning. Someone needs help, and only this learner could help. No one else could do it. But it's not time sensitive. Unless he could do it after learning. Now, the truth is, the mitzvah is Efshad Yacherim, but he could do it after learning. So, if you look in the Goyin. Early and Bira grew a reish mem chav dalid. The guy learns it from Mamish in a machaba that if, even though it's the yefshli acherim, but if it can be done after learning, that's a kolsh gain that that's considered, as far as you're concerned, efshad yacherim. Not someone else. You finish learning and then you do it later. In other words, the fact that it's the yefshli acherim, but if you could do it later, do it later and don't pause in your learning. Another klal, which unfortunately you see the truth of it, someone asks, a lamdin, a masmid, to help him. Other people could do it, but they're not going to do it. You know, that's usually the case. The one that learns a lot is the bigger, is the bigger Baal Chesed. Bekitza, someone needs help, and the, the people that are not learning are too busy doing nothing to help him. But the masmid says, listen, no one else is going to do it. So it's really Efshdi Acherim, but bottom line, it's not going to happen. So Rav Ozen Chaylik Yud Simen Yud Gimel says, Lamaris, if it's not going to happen, then for you, unfortunately, it, it is EF Shayachayr. I'm saying unfortunately because really other people should do it. But if no one's going to do it but you, even though they could do it, that's considered EF Shayachayr. 
Now to apply this a little more specifically, let's start with the following shayla. Someone either in the middle of learning or is about to go learn, there's a knock on the door, someone needs a meal. He's either learning or about to go learn, and a is No? So the Yemes says, we know that Achnas Zarchem is a great mitzvah. God Lachnas Zarchem Yais and Kabbalas Pnei Ashchinim. Chesed is one of the Amudei Oilam. But then again, Talmud Torah is also one of the Amudei Oilam. So what do I do? Push it. This is a simple shot to call. If there's someone else home that could take care of this Oireyach, it's it's Efshay De Acherim. Go learn, and the mitzvah will take place. If there's no one home, Zab to Chafetz Chaim in Avas Chesed Chayle Gimel Perik Aleph. If there's no one home, this is a mitzvah that's Efshad the Efshad Yacherim, and don't go learn or stop learning to tend to the guest. What to me was inspiring, the Chafetz Chaim added. Let's say there's someone home. You have two children home. They can give this guest supper, but your your children are all of twelve and fourteen, and the guest is sixty years old. He's almost three times their age put together. It's not respectful. They have uh, two children tending a chash of a guest. So even though it's physically but if it's not appropriate for the guest, if it's not of the guest, stay home and take care of the guest. In other words, it has to, the mitzvahs have to be done properly. The Chavetz Chaim and Avaz Chesed and Aleph Beis, if Kotan Dalet says, if someone asks you for a loan during learning, that's Yafshay Acherim. If you can't wait till after learning, stop learning and do the mitzvah. The general klal of Torah Chesed is very simple. The klal is Yafshay Acherim, leave it for someone else. If it's Yafsha, you do it. There's a lot to say, but I think what suffices is I quote a Gemara. In Rosh Hashanah Yud Ches, the Gemara says, Rabbi and Abaya were descendants of Beis Eli that were cursed not to live beyond 40 years old. And indeed, Rava, the great Samoyer Rabbi, I should say, the great Samoyer Rabbi, was nifty after 40 years old. But Abaya lived till 60. Manishtana, Zabdimar Abaya, the Osik, the Tayr, Uvagamilis Chasadim, was Oich the extra 20 years. Now, I'm going to be more that I cannot explain this Gemara, because I have no doubt that, that Rava, Rabbi, did Chesed 100%. When he had to do Chesed, he did Chesed. We didn't just ignore chesed. So Rabbi did the chesed. But Abaya somehow did more chesed. And the lesson that we learn from this Gemara is the Rabbi Shalom Blight and the Shildig. Again, I'm sure Rabbi did nothing wrong. But somehow Abaya squeezed in more chesed. And Abaya lived the 20 years and made up the time, so to speak. You know, it's, it's something that, it's ironic, but you see it, for some, somehow, G'doyle Oilam always have time for others. I still remember Moshe's Levaya, Moshe's Zechayin Levracha, and his son Rebuven said that his father, he didn't give himself an extra second, he was so disciplined in his time. That's a trademark, that's a, a moifus of a godl, they don't have a second to breathe, but somehow they have time for others. That's godless. That's living tire. So chesed. We have time for others. Yefs the achayim is not bittul tire. Don't be stressed and don't be torn. That's the rutz and Hashem. It's the most important thing for right now. Davening, of course, is the same thing. We we learned the gemara on Shabbos. Daf yud zman tire lechud zman tzvil lechud. But there's another cheshbon. Never forget the gemara. Needed daf ayin amid beis. The Mar says, the Mar asks, how could a person succeed in his learning? He has to daven. My kamash malon, ha baloi ha loi sagi. Without davening properly, you won't succeed in your learning. So it's not just a heta, it's a tnai koidim lamaisa. There has to be a good davening for a good learning. The Mishtebura quotes a rekeach. Now this is interesting. The rekeach was a risha. The Mishtebura in Kuvvav, Sif Kot and Ches. And I quote Lashon Mr. Bura, Hamavatul Torah Mishum Limud. He's too busy to, to learn, to daven, he's learning. I feel loimid imacherim. He's learning with others, he's giving a share. Kol ayoyim, he's learning the whole day. Ke'ilu loy lomad. I mean, he, not just he's schus harabim, but kol ayoyim. And what's the result? Ke'ilu loy lomad. Why? I guess that's the Gemara Yavamis. Ain't li ala tayra, I feel tayra ain't li. 
So there has to be time for learning and for davening. It's not bittel Torah to have time for davening. You know, sometimes we have to say this because people think otherwise, but that's really part of the life of an Eil Chayid. A friend of mine asked her of Moshe, it was during a regular Seyed in Yeshiva, and someone that he knew was in a, a critical condition, a Chayla Masukin, could he take a few, take a minion or two and say Tilim. So Moshe said, Avada, I, you're stopping from learning, and Torah is, the schus of Torah is Keneged Kulam, but there's a certain schus of Tilim. When a person is, is a chayla masukin, tell him has special qualities. So it's not bitl taira, it's the schus of chesed, the schus of tfila that this chayla desperately needs. <clears throat> then he asks, how long should we say till him until? Until people stop, stop saying with kavana. <laughs> then it's not gedavit. But basically you have to have time for others. <clears throat> the question we began with, should we stop learning for Kiddush Levana? So that's poshit. If this is the last opportunity for do Kiddush Levana, so you stop. It's a, it's a regular mitzvah, even though it's the Rabbana. The other question was a little more challenging, because really there was a two days left. Maybe you should have more betochen, maybe you don't have betochen. So that was a subjective issue. Lamaisa, as I told you, there was time afterwards, but at least you understand that when there's a mitzvah to be done, that's the call of the hour. A parent needs help. So... The son, the son I can mean, can mean a bacha, can be a 50-year-old son that zeichad have parents. The klal is basically, ki berova aim is a chamura sheba chamuras. And if a parent needs help, a son has to have time for the parents. I, we learned to Gemara Megillah, Godel Tal Metayra, Yoisim ki berova aim, and the Mechab and Reish Mem, Yud Gimel quotes this. The answer is, if you know the Gemara, you should know the Pshat in the Gemara. The Gemara that says, Talmud Torah is bigger than Kibbutz is in a context that Yaakov Avinu, when he was away from his parents' home, when he was learning Hashem Ve'eva, he was not punished. Why not? I there's no Kibbutz because since he went to learn, so he's a, he's part of Kibbutz eh? So another the person that wants to go learn in a yeshiva out of town, Eretz Yisrael, he's denied Kibbutz, but that's the Ratzon Hashem because God Talmud Torah. But says the Pischei Tshuva in Reish Mem Sif Cotton Ches. If the child is home and the parent re- requests something, then what's the shayla? Kibarov is like, like any other mitzvah, if not more, it's chamur sheba chamurais. So you stop learning to do a mitzvah. I, the Gemara, that's when a person's away from home. He can't do kibarov. But avada and avada, zokti pischei tshuva, you look in the bira gross, if cotton lamed hay, bekitza, if you look in Rabbi Yashvin, Ashri, Ishi, Yerdeh, Chelik Beis, Amit Shem Ches, they all say, if a person, even though he's learning, Basmada, and a parent needs something, if it can't wait, then of course, it's not Bittal Torah, that's, that's living Torah, to stop learning, to help a parent. There's a lot to say about this, but let me suffice with, I saw the Orchus Rabbeinu, Chelik Gimel, Kuf Ches, he quotes Abchaim Kanyevsky, that the Chazinish, Kayedu, his mother lived a long time, and the Saif Yomer, the Chazanish, would travel every day and spend Chatsi Sho Ayoisa with her. Besides the travel in those days that was difficult before B'nai Brak was what it was today. I am certain he didn't speak a half hour of Raj B'nai B'kiva Eg with her. What he spoke about, I don't know. <laughs> but he spent a half hour or more besides the traveling. I need not tell you the Chazanish was a Masmid Otsum. But this is Kulei Tayyar. To learn Yom and Valayla. And to have time for parents. Now, the only question that, that is something to think about is, the mother, the father asks the son, I need help. So the son says, why can't Sarah do it? Sarah, of course, is not the Chayav and Talmud Torah. Or why can Yassi? He's a little child. He's not learning anyhow. So then you could think, is that considered F Shai Diachayim? Maybe the girl could do it. The daughter, maybe the younger son could do it. So when I was a child, I thought that was a pretty good excuse. <laughs> but now as a parent... I think, you know, I guess you think, you know, you get older, you get a little smarter. If the parent is sensitive to Limer Atayra and yet asks the big boy to help, there must be a cheshbon. The parent doesn't have to give a din v'cheshbon, you know, why it's yafshdei acheir. But if the parents are responsible and they ask the boy that's learning to help, there must be a cheshbon. Now, if the son is convinced without a shadow of a doubt that the parents are unaware that there's someone else home, no, then maybe you could, you know, try to work it out diplomatically. But if a parent wants this child to help, that's considered Iyav Shri and let him do the mitzvah b'simcha. 
someone is learning, whether he's learning alone or with a, a group, and a Tamad Chacham walks in. It's a mitzvah to rise it, and they say, V'takam, V'dart Ibn Ezaqim. I am learning. Teretz is now, you have to live Taira. And that's the Gemara. The Gemara in Kedushin, interesting Gemara. Lamed Gimel, the Gemara says that a Tamad Chacham is not supposed to stand up uh, for another time, a, a, a learner is not supposed to stand up for a time of during his learning. Zoktimar, layet oleh Abaya. Abaya cursed that statement. Now, why did Abaya get such a, such a sharp reaction? I'll tell you why. Because this is keneged, our right attitude. What do you mean? You're learning and therefore you can't do a mitzvah? And takin yeridei reish mem dalad yud aleph. Even when he's Isaac betoyer, he has to stand up for a time of in other words, learning is important, but now is covered at Torah. The same is true, someone is learning, and the Gabbai decides to take the Sefer Torah from this base Medjish to the different room. So the Allah is a Chiyiv, Pash the Chiyiv the Raisa, to stand up for a Sefer Torah. The Mar learns it out from standing up for a Tamad Chacham, so it's Pash the Mitzvah the Raisa. Even though you're learning, so stand up, continue learning, but stand up. Now, of course, the Gabbai should be try to be sensitive, to do it, if he has to move the Sefer Torah or Mishta Sefer Torah, do it not when people are learning, do it before or afterwards, but at the end of the day, if you're learning and there's a chiyot to stand up for a Sefer Torah or for a Tamad Chacham, do the Mitzvah B'Simcha. A sensitive question is, we just had the Yom Tev of Sukkis, and you notice people that spend a lot of time, hours or days, finding the most beautiful Esrik, and there are other people that well, they, like, they come into the store, I want an esrig that's Naki from Bittel Tire. Some, some, Naki, well, some want an esrig that's Naki from any Vlatfleck, and they want an esrig that they shouldn't have to spend too much time. Now, Avada and Avada, that's, that's a wrong expression. Looking for a nice esrig is not Bittel Tire. What they meant to say was that I found a beautiful esrig. Is there a nice one? Probably. But this is a Mahoda, a Miyaitza. This is, has a Hidda Mitzvah. Let me go back to learning. So, which attitude is right? So that's very tricky. Because Avada, there's a mitzvah to do every mitzvah properly. It's a chiyah. And you look in the Rav, in Hilchus Talmud Dalit Gimel, Avada, you have to stop learning for a mitzvah. But you have to stop, also he says, L'kayimim kilchosan, b'chol t'nayayim, b'dikdukeim, b'dikduke soifim, b'tachlis ashleimus. Kizeh kaladam. The Rav's, you have to do a mitzvah perfectly. And then go back to your learning. So if someone's looking for a choice esterig, that's not bitl terim, that's kiyam mitzvah. But then again, you could understand why some people say, I found a beautiful esterig, do I have to look for another one, and another one, and I'll have saif? The Chut Hashani, of Nisan Karelis, quotes his uncle, at the Chazinish, this is in, in Shabbos, Aleph, Ahmed Nun Vav, that didn't sp- spend so much time finding the nice esterig, he found a beautiful esterig, and back to learning. The Nidru and Yud Gimel, Mem Gimel says this as well. In other words, you find a beautiful esterig that's Mahod al and back to learning. Rabbi Zundel Salanta used to say that all the Chumris and the Zahiris don't come close to a Torah. Now that's a, something you have to understand, but it's true. You want to be Machmir? So, Hasmada the Gresta from Kite. So if someone could find a choice esterig, and go back to learning, fine. If someone feels that he can still find better, he's not satisfied with this, it's not Bittal Torah to look vital. If someone's not learning anyhow, then Fakert, that's the time to show Ahabas and Mitzvahs, and look, and look, and look, find the most beautiful Esri. A very common question, which today is probably one of the most common questions, is the learning, whether you're learning alone with Chavrusa, with a Shir, and there's a minion that's davening. And you could hear Shachris, Mincha, Mayriv, Kaddish, Kedusha, everything. Do you have to pause to answer during learning? So really this could be a share for itself, but I think in your name, I think it should be quite simple. Yes, it's true, the Mechab and Kuf Chafei says that if you hear Kedusha, even though you daven already, you have to answer a second time. It's a Mitzvah Dereis, the Mekdash Di B'Soyach B'nei Yisrael. Yes, it's true, the Mechab and Reish Tezvov Si Bey says, that if you hear someone saying a bracha, you have to answer amen. It's a chiyiv. Oy bazoi, it should come out that I'm learning, and I hear kedusha or kaddish, I have to answer. Ah, you davened already, but now there's a chiyiv to answer. And that's why you'll find a number of poiskim that say, you're learning, very nice, but now they're saying kedusha, answer kedusha, and go back to your learning. 
And the Chayra, you could even add as a Raya, the Gemara and Shabbos, the Afyud. You're learning, very nice, but now is man tefillah l'chud. So answer to what you hear. And that's Taka Amahalach that I saw a number of Paiskim say. But I also found there are a number of Paiskim that are Meikul. And basically the Cheshben is, Avadi Yemechayiv to answer Kaddish and Kedusha, even though you're ready Davin. But who said that applies even if you're learning now after Davin? Zot Ravaz and Chaylik Test, Simon Mem Gimel, I just answer Amen, and what's the problem? It's one word. He quotes our Gemara in Brachas Nun Gimel that even Amen to the Brach of Maria Eish is Bittel based Medrash. No. But we could say certainly if it's not just one Amen. It's Yesh Fei Rabba, and then it's Baruch, and then it's Chalor Sashat, and, and then it's Ashi of Olatzian, and you know, it's a whole davening. But the Emmis is another concern. Not only just there's no he, no chiyah, but maybe there's a, there's a problem with answering. And I'll tell you, it's a very practical problem. Someone's learning, and he tries to juggle both. He, he's learning. He's also answering the Chazar's shots to Mincha. Okay, good. Go to Rabbi, you just answered Amen. Which bracha did you answer Amen to? I have no idea, but I know it's Chazar's shots. Well, the Shechanar calls that Amen Yisayna. He said Amen to a bracha, you don't know what it is. So what's he going to do tomorrow? He's going to concentrate to listen to what Baruch is being said. Now, when you concentrate on the Chodesh Hashats, you're not concentrating on, on, on the Gemara. So the Samas Chaim and Simon Shinder Dalit says, if you're going to answer, and it's going to end up being Amen Yisayma, so you're not, you're not investing your time properly. The point is, Avadi is supposed to answer Kaddish Kedusha as much as you can. But if it's distracting your learning... Maybe that's not the chiyav. In other words, there's no chiyav to re-answer if you're learning. But there's another chesman that I think we, we really applies to everything we learned today. The Rambam, as I mentioned, and the Shachon Aruch quotes him in Reish Manvav Sif Yud Ches, says that someone has a mitzvah, so he should stop learning. The Yachzul HaTayrasa, he's always like Satan Rambam. You finish the mitzvah, go back to your, your learning. Now we know there's no extra word, there's no extra letter in the Rambam. The Rambam says 12 letters, two words, V'yachzul ha'tayrasay. So all the Naisekelem wonder, what's the Chiddush? Avada, you finish learning, you go back to learn. you finish your mitzvah, go back to learning. The answer, and the Rav Shechon seems to imply this, Avada, you have to stop learning, do a mitzvah. But that's only if after finishing the mitzvah, you're going back to learning. Let's say the, the person gets distracted or the mitzvah is so overwhelming he doesn't go back to learning. The Rav says this in a Chiddush Pella, but the Rav says in Hilchus Talmud Torah, Ben Azai spoke about the greatness of having a family. Yet Ben Azai never got married. Why not? How could that be? So the Rav, Ben Azai felt that if he's going to get married he won't be able to go back to his learning. Avad he could learn, but he can't go back to his full toy. Involvement in learning. And it wasn't V'yachzul L'tayrasi. You have to be a Rav Shechon to say that. But anyhow, this is a Metzius that anybody who learns during Chazar Sashatz or during anything knows. If you're going to answer Chazar Sashatz, you're not going back to your learning. You'll juggle and have end up with a little of everything or, 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 or basically nothing. Either Chazar Sashatz or learning. <coughs> Rav Moish in the Dibbis also says this in Mem Gimel Dal, that if you can't learn when you're after doing the mitzvah, then, you, then you're not mechayiv to do the mitzvah. Rav Sternbuch in Chaylik Beis, Ayin Hay says, certainly if someone, or either a group, or, or even Chavrus are learning in the back, and they're not part of the, the tzibur, they don't even have to answer the Kedusha. Because it's not like they're, they're being mavaz of the Kedusha, it's clear, they're learning upstairs or downstairs or behind the mechitzah, and they're doing something that's more important. They finished having, now they're learning. So again, I, I saw the Sharm Tzana Malacha in, in Simon Chaf, Sif Katan Aleph says the same thing as well. And especially for those that don't have that much time to learn. If this is their Kviyas Itim Latayra, this is their Mitzvah. You know, the Yosef Oymitz, page two, 266. He says, if you're learning a whole day and now there's a, there's, a, there's a Mitzvah to do, so you stop learning for a Mitzvah. But if this is your only learning during the day, if this is your kviyas item, then you don't stop for a mitzvah. Because this is a mitzvah also. Besides Talmud Torah, this is a mitzvah kviyas item. If you're not going to have kviyas item, so Torah ma'ateyala. 
So for those that are, 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 time is limited, you can't jeopardize that share that you have. So again, I can't say all agree, but it, to me it comes out that if someone cannot answer and go back to his learning or cannot focus on both, especially if there's a, he's sitting in a different place, he, he could ignore the davening around him, learn gesund to hate, as long as you daven first, now is man teure lechud, to focus on learning. Of course, it's, it's much better to find a quiet place to learn, that you don't have to have this nesoyin, but if it's not shaykh, there is this het of now is man teure lechud. Rav Gishtet, in the Lairas Nasim, your Aleph Dalit has a shayla, which is very negeya, in the yeshiva, there's one class that the Chavis is davening mincha, or there's making a siyam, they're saying Kaddish, and the class next to them are learning. Does the class that hears Kaddish or, or davening has to answer? He says, no. He says, now your Chiv is learning, learning and not answering. We have this question, a person's learning, a Rebbe's giving a share, a Magachir's giving a share, and there's thunder or lightning. Do you have to pause to make the bracha? No, this is a mitzvah that you have a chiyav to do. So you have to make the bracha. The Dabatzina Rav, Chelek Beis, and Yud says it's for Dabat Poshit. And to me, a shtikla rai is the Gemara that we began in brachas. They're learning, and they brought ner. Now, the truth is, ner is not ma'akiv, e machzir and acharel. But once you have it, make a bracha. So lightning and thunder, if you hear it, if you see it, say the bracha and go back to learning. <clears throat> Rav Shalim Bezalman, Ali Cheshleim, a perik test, who says you're allowed to continue learning and ignore the Davosh HaBikdusha, he does add, which is Kedai to mention, let's say they finish davening, the minion is over. One fella comes late, but he feels guilty, he, he missed davening, he decides to make a Hayich HaKadusha. So that's wrong, because you're staring nine people that are learning for your Hayich HaKadusha. Who said that's more important? See, this is Fakir. This is your problem, you came late, so find a different minion or wake up early. But to disturb nine people from learning, that's Talmud Torah Kinegakulam. So you won't have Kedusha. Hopefully tomorrow you'll get up on time. The question about tzedakah during learning, this is a, to me a very challenging question. Besides the fact that tzedakah is a chash mitzvah, and there's a love of not giving tzedakah, but in most of all, there's a, a tremendous bin other mechaveri. A person that's collecting is broken enough, his esteem is at an all-time low. If you tell him, no, I'm not now, it's very painful. But then again, you have to make a decision. So this is poshit without a suffix. If someone is learning privately and an ani comes to him, about you have to stop to give tzedakah. This is living out like a yid. I, Tamatara Kanegakula, but right now your mitzvah is Pasayach Tiftach. The only question that we're going to discuss is if there's a shear going on and it's very disturbing. A collector that goes from person to person dis- disturbs the whole shear. Now, we see this sometimes uh, in real life. So that's the question, is there any heta of, because it's Torah the Rab. So I saw both Rav Vosn and Chelek Yud, Kufn and Zayim. And listen, Karelitz and Chut Hashani, in Yom Tev, Amit Shinnun Beis, both say that this usually is a mitzvah that's Efsha in a different time. He could come before the Shir or after the Shir. Rav Rav Nassim Gishtet, I'm sorry, Nassim Kirelis was talking about uh, a shear. Rav Vazna was talking about a koil. You know, he comes to the koil, middle of learning, and disturbs the whole koil. Come at the end of the koil and stand by the door and collect from everybody. Territ is for the collector's convenience, he wants to come during the Seder. So both Rav Vazna and Yabad Lachayim, Rav Nassim Kirelis, both say that's Efsha, not Efshe, someone else. Efshe in a different time. And they say, tell it to come before or afterwards, but not to disturb the rhythm of the entire year. Now, of course, you have to do that with sensitivity. To chase them away, you know, with, with, uh, you know is something that could be very painful. So you have to be very careful when to apply this. But if, indeed, the mitzvah could be done after the learning or before the learning, this would be a form of Efshe al yidei a different time. If it's not a question, if it can't be done any other time, like Rav Ozen himself says, if the person needs money now, it can't wait, so that's E-F Shadiachem, and then of course you have to stop learning. Now again, we're not minimizing the importance of tzedakah, but we have to realize that this is the time of learning. Sometimes, I even heard that people don't go to certain shiurim because there's always collectors coming, so they're not going to learn their kviyas. You have to see the big picture. 
I'll tell you a fascinating shayla. This is in Yonah the Yom Amor. The mitzvah of Ner Chanukah used to have a very limited time. Achetich l'regelm and Ashuk had barach a half hour in some time, and, and after this, you weren't allowed to do it. Since we started lighting indoors, and it's for Bnei Habayis, the mitzvah is goes as long as people are still up. The question that many yeshivas have, many koyalim have, a typical yeshiva gedoyla has say to go until seven or eight. A koyalim goes till seven or eight. The question is, should you stop to light in the optimal time, which is very subjective, but let's say 5.30, 6 o'clock, or, no, look around, most balabat, the most working people, don't light 5.36, because they rely on the Ramah, that this man is kolalayla. So they finish working, they go home, they light. Why should punk the yeshivas stop at 5.30? Yeah, they have all the time in the world, they can do what they want. Maybe they should also go till 7, 8 o'clock. Now, you might sa- think this sounds outlandish, but I'll tell you the Me'iri, one of the Rishayim, in Shabbos Chafal from the Beis, writes that the Bizman Azeh, this, the, the, the Bizman goes until Amoyda Shacha, as long as someone's up. And he says, After learn, they, they did lit Hanukkah. I don't think they lit close to Amoyda Shacha. But when they finished learning, they went home and they lit. Now, this is a sensitive question because you might say, wait, wait a minute, but if this man, the optimal man is whatever, 5.30 or 6, so that's the right time. But then again, if you leave 5.30, you're losing out on two hours of learning. Is that Hidda Mitzvah? So maybe the, the learning of two hours is Daicha the Hidda Mitzvah. The Mekadosh Yisrael and Chanukah Kuf Memov quotes what the Satmar Rav used to say, that really what we should do Chanukah, the Satmar Rav said this, one bach should light and be moitz the entire yeshiva, mikadadin. They shouldn't stop learning for Adlaka's Ne'er Chanukah. But the bach won't listen, so he didn't try to do it. But the Yisrael Adov is, the, ner, the mitzvah of Chanukah is, lashki, is, is to count to Lashkicham Torah Secha, not to become one big Lashkicham Torah Secha, so again, whether you do it or not, but at least you understand where it's coming from. Avada Talmud Torah Kineget Kulam. And if you could do the mitzvah afterwards, you have both. But some say, no, if the mitzvah is to do Bizman Lechat that's Ratzon Hashem. And of course the eight is to go back to learning afterwards. But at least you know the different minhagim regarding that mitzvah. Another question, which is also important to mention, Chasanis. To stop learning Mesashir to go to a chasim. Now, Pasha, this is the Gemara in Ksub, it's Daf Yudzayim. If it's Yafshli Achairim, the Vatlan Tamatayra for Achnas's Kala. But the question, of course, is today, Baruch Hashem, Halavai Vaita, there are many chasim, sometimes more than one a night. Tayyar Matehayala. I heard from all the Yidin in the Shtetl, in the Haim, there was a chasim, Achmeza, ten times a year, not more. Today, there's a, one or two chasim every night. In Halicha Shloim, in Yud Gimel, Hora 22, there's a Merdika Maisa that really captures the, the, the problem here in this Sugya. Rav Shlaim Bezalman had a Shaila in Yichus about a certain Bach, if he was a Yid or not. And he pushed, couldn't be Machriya. He sent the Shliach to go to Rav Moshe in America to ask Rav Moshe the Shaila. And while you're there, ask Rav Moshe also, what do you do about the Shaila of stopping to learn at night to go to Chasanis or Leolainu to Levayas, you learn the Gemara, and Mara says, unless there's Shishim Reba by Levayas, you have to go to Levayas. So what do you do about the mitzvah of Levayas and Chasanis? So the Shliach went to Ramayisha, and the Shaila about, and Ramayisha was very sick then, he was laying down in bed. The Shaila that he had about, about Yichus, Ramayisha answered laying in bed. When he asked him the second Shaila about Chasanis and Levayas, Ramayisha sat up and said, that's a Shvera Shaila. So Yichus, Ramayisha was able to handle lying down. And Moshe said, I have the same, I have the same struggle. Because the Maishah, the Gemara says, Mavatlan, Talmud Torah. So Ramayisha says, the best thing is not to find out about these things. Halavai. So Rabbi Zalman wanted to say that since the Lechaser, Levai is called for this time and it's late, so you're stopping to learn to sit around. That is no heter. Others say that the mitzvah is Hachnosah's Kala, which means when they bring in the Kala to the Chuppah. Who said to sit by a, a festive uh, suda when there's nice music in the background? That's Daichat Hamatayr, Mechatesa. 
And I would add that if you don't know the Chassan and Kala, and you're not going to go over to the Chassan and Kala, you're going out to the Mechutin, that's not Achnos' Kala. And also, what's the Yachz of the If someone has limited time, Torah Matehei Olam, family Matehei Olam, sleep Matehei Olam. I mean, there's so many things we have to do, and, and just the, the, the Chassan is our Baruch Hashem overwhelming. So a person has to have his priorities. I will tell you, Rav Shach, Zohar was once Masakin once in Panevich Yeshiva, that for a chasana, only 10 Bacham allowed to go. And this caused quite an uproar. So someone, I don't know why, but he wrote to Rav Vosna in Chelek Zayin, Reish Gimel, is this a correct takana? I don't know why he did that, but that's what he asked Rav Vosna about Rav Shach. And Rav, Shach, about, and, and Rav Vosna was very confident that was the right decision. He said, Ramaisa, he has enough Nisamchim, enough people by the Chasana. And he says, the Mitzvah Chashuva Ad Ma'oi to go to a Chasana, but it has to be the Midah of a Minion. And therefore, Yafa Don, the Yafa Tikkun, Rav Shach, Ten Bachim per Chasana. I don't think this is going to happen in our times. One thing I can tell you, I want to ask Rav Pam Zuchayin of the Racha. If a person is invited, you have to go to every Chasana. So he told me, are there enough Misamchim? I said, oh, there are probably a hundred, you know, Bachim dances. So that's Efshay the Achayim. I, the person, will miss me, he invited me. That's not considered E Efshay the Achayim. If there are enough Misamchim, then a person should feel confident that that's not his Chayim. A Levaya is more of a Shaila, because in Shulchan Aruch, in Shin Samach Aleph, it says Beferish, that unless there is Shishim Ribui by the Levaya, Shishim Ribui, then you have to go. So again, the only hat that might be that the chiv is only when there's levaya sames, when they're escorting the mace. Hespedim is not part of the chiv. Or like Rav Shlaim Bezalman suggested, if it's late, halavai, we shouldn't have to deal with this suffix, but this is something to think about. Nicham Avelim is a little of a easier question, because there's no chiv of shishim ribui. So if someone feels that it's yeshle acherim, his presence has to be there, then about the stop learning. But it's time to travel. You know, today Nicham Avelim is in Munsi and Lakewood or vice versa. It's four hours of learning, or, 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 or four hours of life. A person has to make a cheshbon if it's really the chiv or not. Let me leave you with, with one more shayla. I think I would be remiss in not mentioning it. Imagine the following scenario. A person and his young son, 12 and a half year old, are walking out to learn at night. And the wife says, I need help. I need one of you. Either you, father, or son. One of you have to stay, one go learn. Who has priority? Who should go learn? Who should stay home help the mother? So we would say, if the child helps the mother, it's ki aim. Isn't that be first? But if you say that, you might have forgotten the Gemara, l'chayu. In Shabbos Kuf Yotes, Gemara says, al tigu b'meshichu elu tenoike shel beis A child that learns his, wor- his Torah keeps the world. Ein ha'oyla miskayim b'shvil hevel tashbar of tenoike shel beis rabbim. Rav Papa said, but what about my learning? Your learning is important, but the hevel of sheyesh sheein by chet, that's the key of ma'olam. And that's why when the, when the Beis HaMikish will be rebuilt in Herav Yameinu, we'll stop learning from Bidin Beis HaMikish, but not the children. Oi bazoi, Zokab Chaim Kanyevsky, l'choyer, it comes out that the father should go taka and help and let his young child go learn because he's in hevel sheein by chet. Ah, you'll say, my son, 12 years old, he has plenty of Averis. It's not true. He has Averis, but as the Rav and Shulchan Aruch and Aleph Gimel says, that under the mitzvah is considered Tashbar, because he's not responsible for his Averis. And this is something that we have to realize the importance of learning of children. We underestimate. They're not learning a Shver Rajba. But their learning is so important that it's Doicha, even Binyam Beis HaMikdash. The Gewalt is chus that our Rebbeim have of teaching Tashbar. The Achrayis that we as parents or as Rebbeim and Alam to make sure the children learn Torah. This is the, the most important Limbara Torah. The world is Miskayim on Torah. You know, today we live in a world that Kulam Keneget Talmud Torah. There's so much going on. But we have to realize Talmud Torah Keneget Kulam. And that's certainly the Kiyam Ha'olam. I would talk to you all. <clears throat> Shame Egan Shirtar like to thank Rav Smith for today's share. Rav Smith will be giving a sikkim of 
Ravosna, Ravosna, and Rav Nisgerelt. Yeah, oh, that was Pasha. That was, okay, I'll let it. That was Pasha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ready, ready. You ready? I'm about to seek him. Short summary, learn to as Hashem. There's no doubt about it. I mean, this is Talmud Torah is a class for itself. Talmud Torah can egg kulam, kol mitzvah yiseh, shal Torah are outweighed by one vart of Torah. And Sarah Adam ma'oid ma'oid lechabei besat Torah. The most important chesed for klal Yisrael, the most important klal work, the most important national security. The yid zitz to learn Torah. And that's why there's the chaim of bittel Torah. Even one word, even asusa, even birchas haner. But what's also equally important, Amanas Lassai. Torah has to be Amanas Lassai to the extent that if someone learns and doesn't do mitzvahs, mutaf, mutaf, it's better he wouldn't have been born. And that's the challenge, the paradox of Talmud Torah, Kinege Kulam. Avada Torah is more than all mitzvahs, but you have to have time for all mitzvahs. So the Hezbet that we explained is that the mitzvah of Talmud Torah begins when there's no other chiyav, when there's no other mitzvah, when there's no other chesed, when there's no other Ratzon Hashem, and the most important thing in your life is this moment of Ratzon Hashem. So it could be buying sprinkles, it could be helping fix someone's flat, it could be doing an, uh, washing the floor to cover Shabbos, but a person should always do mitzvahs besimcha. The Ratzon Hashem is right now the tzivoy of this moment. And that's why if someone says, Ain't the Ella Torah, I feel the Torah ain't like. It's Rashi, there's no schar for Limit because Limit has to be Amanas Lassois. The basic klal for juggling is Efsha the Achairim. Let them do it and you stay in learning. If it's Yefsh the Achairim, then you have to stop. And it's not Bittal Torah, that's living Torah. If someone could do it after Seder, because he, only he could do it, but he could do it after learning, so then do it after learning. That's considered right now Efsha Ba'if and Acham. If others could physically do it, but won't do it, and only you could do it, so that's considered Yefsha the Achairim. Hachnosis Orchim or Torah, the answer is simple. If someone else could take care of this guest, Respectfully, sufficiently, so let them do it. If no one could do it, then close the Gemara and then G'doylach Nasazarachim, more than Limer Atayra. Chesed Atayra, again, the same deciding factor. Remember those, the incredible lesson of the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, Yud Ches, Abaye, and Rabba. Abaye somehow found more time for Chesed and the Barishla implied Lishuldik. Davening, of course, has priority. It's Mantayra Lechud, Mantvil Lechud. And to tell them for a is also appropriate when it's a Efsha Ba'ifanacher. 
Kiddush Levana is enough to stop learning unless it's Shaykh in a different time. Kibbut of Aim, you're allowed to go learn and not have Kibbut of. That's Godel Kamatamatayra, Yaisimi Kibbut of. But if a parent asks a child for something, a child, whether he's a young child or an older Bacha or a 50, 60 year old uh, child who's a grandfather, we have to have time for parents. That's part of the mitzvah of Kibbut of Aim. And that's Dayacha Talmatayra because now the only thing that's important in your world is Kibbut of Aim. Standing up for a Talmud Chacham, a Sefer Torah during learning Avada is a Chiyav. You could do both, learn as you stand up, but to find time for Dalad Minim, some spend more time, some less time, but the ik is to do Ratzon Hashem. If to answer Dvaram Shebekedusha during learning is a very difficult issue, if it doesn't disturb the learning, then of course you should, but very often you can't do both, and then you could sit in the back or upstairs or in the side and just focus on the learning and, avoid, and even ignore the Kedusha because now is man Torah l'chut for you. It's better to find a place you don't have to come on to these Shailas but basically if you're learning and it's disturbing you don't have to answer. To give tzedakah during learning or during davening if now is the only time to give about you have to give it's not bitl Torah it's not bitl Tefillah you give and you go back to your davening or your learning. If it disturbs the entire shear and the, and the collector could come before or after the shear, then we have a cloud that's efsha, oif, and acha, and then they should make a takana only after or before the learning. Ner Chanukah Bizman, we see two menhagim, I think most people do stop for the lighting of the optimal zman, but those that wait till 7.30, 8 o'clock, they rely on the ikazman is kolalayla and talmatari keneged kulam. Chasen is levai and lichem avelim are all very challenging shailas, but Basically, if it's the Yashdei Acher, it's for the Mitzvah, if it's the Simchas Chasen Vekala, or Loyaleinu, or Levayu, and Lichem Avelim, Avada, for then we say, now is the time to do Chesed, now is the time to realize that Mavatlan Talmatayr for Chasen is Levayis. If someone could minimize the time, or choose which are Yashdei Acherim, which are Yashdei Acherim, Avada, that's, that seems to be the right thing. The Limud of Tinoi Kishel Beis Rabbam has extreme importance uh, Rebbe that teaches Tenei Kishel Beis Rab has an extraordinary schus. Parents that make sure their children learn at that age is a special schus. And basically, we have to remember Talmud Torah Kenege Kulam. Unfortunately, in a world that Kulam Kenege Talmud Torah, our job is to Chazerayin Ma'oid Ma'oid Tzorach Lechabe Besat Torah.